Hi everyone, today we're taking a look at an alternate version of exercise 1-8. Let's take a look at the problem. The problem reads, on October the 1st, Ebony Ernst organized Ernst Consulting. On October the 3rd, the owner contributed $71,500 in assets to launch the business. On October the 31st, the company's records show the following items and amounts. Use this information to prepare an October income statement for the business. So at the end of October, they have cash of $11,250. They end the month with account receivables of $25,000. Remember, that's from sales that they made. They didn't receive cash for those sales. Those sales were made on account. They have remaining office supplies of $1,200. They have land of $28,000. Office equipment of $18,000 accounts payable of five thousand so those are amounts that they owe those were things that they purchased or expenses that they incurred that they just didn't pay out in cash they're going to pay those off in the future they have an iou called an account payable that'll be settled up eventually <clears throat> common stock of seventy one thousand five hundred they paid out cash dividends of two thousand during the month they had consulting revenues of twenty-five thousand. Well, that's interesting. They had total revenues of twenty-five thousand and account receivables of twenty-five thousand as well. So start thinking: Did they actually receive any of these consulting revenues in cash for the month? Well, the answer is no. All that was on account, which they'll receive in the future, future month. Rent expense of four thousand five hundred. So as we start looking at these expenses, we're wondering: Well, were some of these expenses included in this accounts payable? This amount of expenses that just haven't been paid yet. They were incurred, but just hadn't been fully paid yet. So rent expense of four thousand five hundred. Salaries expense of ten thousand. Telephone expense of eight hundred and fifty. Miscellaneous is seven hundred. Now they also give us some very, very important notes. These are notes that would be typically available at the end of the financial statements, simply called the notes to the financial statements. We've summarized just a few here and let's read them. The first is that the owner's initial investment consists of, remember how much common stock there was, $71,500 of common stock. That consists of two things. The owners contributed cash of $43,500 and they also it contributed a non-cash asset called land, 28000 So how much cash did the company actually get then from the owner's initial investment? Just the amount here, the forty three five. The company's 18000 equipment that they purchased, that equipment, well, they paid cash for that. The accounts payable balance, this 5000 consists of 1,200 office supplies purchased. So they purchased the office supplies, and they haven't yet paid for those office supplies. Also, 3,800 employee salaries yet to be paid. So employee salaries were 10,000, but 3,800 of that has not yet been paid. Only the balance has been paid, or the difference has been paid. It does say the company's rent, their telephone, their rent expense, the telephone expense, and their miscellaneous expenses were all paid in cash. No cash has been collected. Oops, sorry about that. No cash has been collected on the 25000 consulting revenue. Well, we figured that out earlier, didn't we? Well, let's move now and try to put together the statement of cash flows for Ebony Ernst. <clears throat> so our cash flow statement has three basic sections. The first section is the cash flow from operating activities, from investing activities, and then financing activities. The cash flow statement is going to ultimately reconcile what the company's ending cash balance was. And so let's go ahead and put that down. The company's ending cash balance on October the 31st, we have that. That was $11,250. So we can put a check mark. Get my pen ready here. Put a check mark by that first one. Now let's take a look at from operating activities. What was the cash that they received and paid as a result of operating activities? The selling uh, that they, they incurred, their consulting revenue, any cash they received from that, and the expenses they incurred, the operating expenses for the period as well. So first, cash received from customers. Well, we know they had consulting revenue of 25,000. They also have that account receivables of 25,000. We saw the note that said no cash has been collected yet. So for our cash flow statement, how much cash came into the company as a result of money being collected from the customers? Nothing, nothing at all. Let's take a look at the next one. Some expenses. 
How much cash do they pay to employees? Well, the salaries expenses that they took was $10,000, but did employees get all of that in cash? Nope. It says out of that 5,000 account payable balance, 3,800 is not represents amounts not yet paid to employees. So out of the 10,000 that employees earned, they were paid all in cash except for $3,800. So $10,000 minus $3,800 tells us the amount that was paid to employees in cash, and that amount was a cash outflow, put in parentheses here, of $6,200, okay? Next, cash paid for rent. It says that there was $4,500 paid for rent. Our note said that the rent was paid in cash, so we know indeed that is a cash outflow, again in parentheses, of $4,500. Next up, the telephone expense of $850. Well, we know that the telephone expense was also paid in cash, so that's an outflow of $850 as well. Miscellaneous expenses paid out in cash as well, so same thing, negative $700 for an outflow. So now we simply total these up, total all of our inflows against our outflows. We only hit outflows from operating activities. 62 plus 45 plus 850 plus 7 totals up to 12,250 of cash outflows in parentheses as it's shown, cash used by operating activities. Okay, let's look at the next section, the cash flow from investing activities. So what money do they receive from investing or what money do they use for investing? What are the things that they purchased or did they sell any of those major assets that they purchased? Well, it says that they bought some office equipment. Office equipment is an, uh, an asset that we invest money into. It's a long-term asset. Notice they have land as well, but they didn't pay cash for land, did they? The owner just contributed that land in exchange for stock. But the only thing the company paid cash for was from investing was the office equipment for $18,000. And it said in that note here that the company purchased $18,000 of office equipment in cash. Now let me go ahead and also check off the earlier ones here. We finished up D as well. Um, let's take, and we finished C as well too. Uh, let's take a look now at our total cash inflows and outflows from investing activities. It was just the 18,000, that's an outflow. So it's a negative 18,000 outflow from investing activities. Last up, our cash flow from financing activities. So how much cash did they actually receive from that owner contributing cash to get common stock? Notice that the, the amount of common stock the company issued altogether was $71,500. But out of that, that's the $43,500 plus the $28,000 only the $43,500 was paid in cash. So that's the only inflow of cash from financing activities. Dividends, well dividends, when a company pays dividends, that's an outflow of cash. Dividends, outflow, goes in parentheses, negative 2,000. So the net cash provided by financing activities is just these two numbers netted together, or $41,500. So last thing then on the statement of cash flows is we're going to add the operating cash inflows and outflows, that net number with the net amount from investing and the net amount from financing. Total them up and they equal $11,250. That's interesting. That's how much cash we ended with. Well, why is that so? Well, how much cash did the company have on October the 1st when they began operations? Zero. But they ended with $11,250. So where did that cash come from? These three sources. The company got most of its cash from the owner, $43,500. They paid $2,000 in cash back to the owner for dividends, bought $18,000 worth of equipment, paid some cash to employees, paid some cash for rent and other expenses. Altogether, we net those together and they end up with cash of $11,250. So that's it, gang. That's a quick look at how to put together the statement of cash flows.